What if a foreign citizen sold Americans fake medication? How would we bring them to justice? This week, we talk about the challenges of bringing foreign counterfeit criminals to justice in the U.S. The U.S. Department of Health and Human Services has a pending rule that, if finalized, would allow states to import prescription drugs from vendors in Canada. If this happens, any state that buys a fake medicine will struggle to hold that foreign vendor accountable. How do I know this? Because the federal government has previously struggled to bring Canadian counterfeit criminals who sold fake medicine to U.S. patients and their doctors into our courts. Having an extradition treaty with Canada, though, does not mean that Canada immediately hands over a citizen to face prosecution here. Sometimes it takes years to get them to give us a defendant, and sometimes we never get them at all. Here's an example. Somewhere around April of 2011, two companies got together to smuggle black market medication into the U.S. They were getting cheap medicine from non-FDA inspected factories and wholesalers that didn't have any U.S. licenses. They sold it to American doctors for a cheap, too good to be too price. One company was TC Medical Group, which was based in Barbados, a tiny island in the Caribbean that's probably beautiful and you probably know it because Rihanna's from there. The other was SB Medical from Toronto, Canada. These two companies distributed over $18 million worth of black market drugs and devices within the U.S. Some of the items sold by this group included counterfeit prescription medicine injections to treat cancer, osteoporosis, rheumatoid arthritis, migraines, and macular degeneration. A federal grand jury also handed down indictments against five individuals in December of 2014, two Canadians and three Americans. By May of 2015, only six months later, the three Americans, the two companies, and one of the Canadians had all struck their deals with the DOJ to serve their justice. The lone holdout was Lexier, a Canadian citizen who was a principal at both of these companies and a key figure. But Lexier did not want to stand trial, raising an objection in court documents that because he was a, quote, free man on the soil, it didn't apply to him. His case to avoid extradition went all the way up to the Canadian Supreme Court. And while his co-conspirators served their sentences, he stalled justice through 2015, 2016, 2017, and into 2018. On July 5th of 2018, the Canadian court ruled that Lexier needed to be extradited to the U.S. Just a few weeks later, he sat in a U.S. courtroom for the first time to finally face the charges against him. While legal tactics had kept him out of the U.S. court for 43 months, it only took the fabulous DOJ prosecutors three months to have Lexier agree to a plea deal. It had taken years of DOJ resources to finally hold him accountable for selling over $18 million worth of black market medicine. At so many points, something could have gone wrong with the court case and he could have gotten away without punishment. How any state doing this thinks that they could do this kind of enforcement with less resources at their disposal is a mystery to me. And that's the best scenario. Other criminals caught during this era, like the CEO of CanadaDrugs.com, did everything possible to avoid setting foot in a U.S. jail, and it worked. He never served a day in jail in the U.S. or Canada. Sometimes we just can't bring foreign criminals to justice, and knowing that, we must be more careful about who we do business with. If you like our videos, please press the thumbs up button on YouTube and then click this icon to subscribe to see future ones. And if you want to see other videos about counterfeit medicines, COVID-19, COVID scams, and medicine safety, click this playlist. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.